There aren't enough chargers. I always have to queue. When Tesla open up all their superchargers to everyone, I won't be able to charge my Tesla, and I've paid for these chargers. Have you heard these? Well, my experiences differ dramatically from those comments, so I decided to check them out. Here are my results. I'm Dave. Welcome to Dave Takes It On. Now, I obviously can't sit at each charger for 24 hours, so the most efficient way to do this is just to select some very popular chargers and monitor them over a 24-hour period via the apps or the website. Well, over the last four years, I've found these to be quite reliable. I could try to monitor the whole of the UK, but the data set would be huge and unworkable. So I selected four charger locations, all reported to be very busy and with queues. I didn't bother monitoring between midnight and 7am as previous visits revealed an almost total lack of use between these hours. So the four chosen are Exeter M5 Services, Rugby M6 Services, Trafford Centre Supercharger Manchester, open to all, and Trenton Gardens Supercharger, Stoke-on-Trent, open to all. I have charged at and filmed at all these locations, can honestly state that I have never found any of them to be totally full when I arrived, nor full while I was filming. But that is not conclusive evidence. I need to try it for myself. Well, if you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe. It really helps a new channel like this. Well, I start with rugby. I've filmed the Tesla superchargers here on many occasions, and now that they've had and added additional 16 bays, I never find queues here any longer. There are now 28 V3 250 kilowatt superchargers, and they are Tesla only. So I've ignored these, and have concentrated on the 12 GridServe 350 kilowatt, kilowatt chargers at the same location, just a few feet away. These I do regular see queues forming, so just how often is of real interest to me. Extra services on the M5 is very similar. It's got a grand total of 32 Tesla V3 250 kilowatt chargers, and they're exclusive to Tesla owners. But alongside, there are 24 GridServe 350 kilowatt chargers. These were recently increased from the original 12 by the addition of another 12. Well, this also makes it the largest rapid and ultra rapid charger location in the UK that I've found. 32 Tesla, 24 GridServe, plus two GridServe Type 2 11 kilowatt fast chargers. Well, excellent layout of the chargers is problematic, as, it, as I discovered on a recent visit. And the power to the GridServe chargers is a bit more hit and miss. I witnessed a number of failures to charge and cars moving from one to another, trying to find one that worked. However, generally all of them seem to work. Well, Trenton Gardens was one of the first locations where they added the new V4 chargers and opened the whole site to non-Tesla owners. There they had the original 8 V3 250 kilowatt chargers and they've added another 10 V4 250 kilowatt units. The location is a shopping village, music venue and large gardens for walks and it pretty much closes overnight although the chargers are accept accessible 24-7. Moving on to the Trafford Centre, it is a large retail park, and Tesla installed a total of 18 V3 250 kilowatt chargers, which they opened to all drivers of all cars. It is one of the busiest locations, and also one of the dearest I've found. This one also almost shuts down after about 11pm, matching the centre itself, but the chargers are 24 hours. Well, I set up a database and began monitoring each location every 15 minutes. Well, it was interesting to note that the Tesla locations report queues and charges out of order on the app. I'll cover this at the end because the reliability results are really interesting. Also note that GridServe do not indicate either any queues or units out of order in real time. Occasionally the status would grey out a charger, but with no explanation, and the availability remained at the full state. Anyway, what did I find? Well, overall, I found only one location where the availability dropped to zero, where all the chargers were in use, but it lasted less than 15 minutes. And that was rugby, which came as no surprise, 
but all of them drop down to single digit vacant bays at some time. Trentham Gardens proved to have the most bays available for the majority of the 24 hours, and Rugby the least. Exeter and Trafford Centre surprised me as they never became totally full. Well, Trentham Gardens, with 18 chargers, began to pick up around 8am in the morning. This was not a complete surprise as the services here are closed overnight. Well, at no time did the location become totally full, five bays being the least available at any time in the 24 hours. The throughput appeared to be quite brisk, and when empty bays dropped, they quickly recovered. Trafford Centre, likewise, does not have 24-hour services. Those are in the centre a short walk away, so overnight usage is not like at a motorway services. Well, here the availability was generally very much lower, but when totally full, the bays emptied quickly. Few occasions the app warned there might be a short queue of less than five minutes and never actually materialised. Empty bays never hit zero. This is a lively site and very well located. Exeter is a simply huge hub and I never expected to find queues. The charges themselves seem to cope quite well. But the location is seriously problematic. Although there is a perfectly good one-way system available, for some reason the site owners have decided to offer motorists a shortcut to the exit back up the hill, directly in front of the grid served chargers. Well, this results in cars that have finished charging having to wait sometimes several minutes before they're able to pull out of the charger bay. The traffic is just incessant. Well, on a bank holiday weekend like Easter coming up, this is likely to be absolutely impossible. With a constant stream of cars exiting through the top exit, those lucky enough to go into the chargers will sit there for ages before trying to force their way out. Although the location works brilliantly in general with ample capacity, I would not go anywhere near this location at peak times, i.e. bank holidays. And this is such a shame because it is not the chargers that are the problem, but the exit procedure. And curing this is absolutely simple and zero cost. Close off the top exit and all cars exiting will keep well clear of the grid charger and go out the bottom entrance exit. The Tesla units are located in a much better position and they probably will not suffer so much at peak times, although it will have an effect. Well, Rugby is one of the new breed of services where the location is single services just off the motorway. It's only a few hundred yards. This means that the traffic from nearby towns and main roads can also arrive here. This makes it a very busy location. Well, Tesla was forced to add an additional 16 chargers to be able to cope. GridServe has not yet done so. Well, Rugby did actually have a zero availability, but it was really very brief. In general, the location Kate copes very well. The services are 24 hours, so they're nice and modern and clean. The availability of grid service is not very clear. It shows only four icons, despite there being over a dozen bays. Some appear greyed out. I suspect this means they're occupied. Some show a yellow circle with a cross. I suspect this means out of order. But with 24 bays at Exeter and only uh, four icons, it doesn't give a clear picture. Nor does it explain which bays are affected with what problem. Well, Tesla app, Tesla app was very different. Their app shows the actual charger that is out of order with a label, 2B, 5C, whatever, and it updates in real time. Now, I was not there physically to check, but one charger was reported out of order for a period of about two hours, then it cleared. Another was out of order for less than half an hour. Well, I suspect if a charger goes out of order, Tesla recognises immediately and they quickly reset it remotely. Well, it's either that or they've got engineers on site during the day. I will investigate to determine which it is. But at the end of the day, all the failed units were once again working and the longest period for a single charger being out of action was less than three hours.
Well, this appears to be the legendary Tesla supercharger reliability in action. I was seriously impressed. Well, this was a snapshot for certain. Another day may have produced much different results. So I'm planning another monitoring session using four different locations in the very near future. Do you, use, do you use any of these locations? Do you have a different experience? Which other sites would you like me to monitor? Well, if this is popular, I can make this a regular feature. So let me know in the comments below. Well, thanks very much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please click the like button. And if you would, please subscribe. It makes such a difference to us as a new channel. If you click the bell icon, the notification, you'll be notified the next time we launch a video. And a massive, massive, massive thank you, last but not least, to our Patreon members. This side of the business is growing dramatically. We've had our most successful month ever. And thank you so much for your support for the channel. I'm Dave.